All right, so again, I would like to welcome South Carolina Realtors to today's webinar, eSignature Packets for Ziplogics Digital Inc. Today, we are going to be covering the following. We'll be understanding the difference between a Ziplogics Digital Inc. subscription and a Ziplogics Digital Inc. member benefit, which it just so happens that Carolina Realtors happens to have. So more on that in just a couple moments. We'll also be configuring your Zipform Plus for use with Ziplogics Digital Inc. And then taking a look at our three steps to setting up and sending our digital signing packets. We'll be taking a look at the signing editor, which appears a little bit later in the e-signature packet setup process. And then we'll be checking the status of our signing packet and also navigating that digital signing process so that if any of your clients or uh, buyers, sellers, they have questions, you'll be able to help walk them through that. We'll also take a look at how you can ultimately access and review copies of signed documents. And we'll talk a little bit too about cybersecurity and two-factor authentication. So a lot to cover today. One thing I do want to mention is that the necessary prerequisite to sending out e-signature packets is of course that you have a Zipform Plus account. So if you have not set up your Zipform Plus account, you can look at the first session of this webinar series in order to uh, learn how to do that. Today is the third session in our webinar series for South Carolina, which is going to be going until uh, January of next year. So if you missed those first two, be sure to uh, check out. I believe that the company YouTube channel has these webinars on, or you can feel free to just ask me in the question box. I'll be happy to send a copy of those out to you. And if you do have any questions throughout the course of this webinar, please feel free to ask those. I will be monitoring that question box periodically just to make we are answering everyone's questions. So again, feel free to type those in at any time. We'll start off today by talking a little bit about Ziplogics Digital Inc. Ziplogics Digital Inc. is an e-signature product. It is the official digital and electronic signing product of Ziplogics. So this would be our in-house signing product. Um, you can do everything basically that you can with any standard electronic signature program, send documents out for contracts for signing and then when they're done uh, they will actually be redeposited inside of your Zipform Plus account. So a super simple process that we're going to be reviewing today. You also have the added benefit with Ziplogics Digital Inc of having digital signing which is a more secure signing solution. We'll be talking a little bit more about that later into today's session. And a couple people have just asked me uh, for the links to the first two courses. I will be sending those out to you. I can run the report after the webinar and find out who had requested uh, those links to the webinars. So let's talk a little bit about member benefit versus subscription. So a subscription to Ziplogics Digital Inc. is going to be exactly what it sounds like pay the annual fee and you will um, be able to use the service. However, South Carolina Realtors happens to have Ziplogics Digital Inc. as part of the member dues. That means your dues that you pay to your state association actually cover Ziplogics Digital Inc. So everything you're seeing today is 100% free of charge to you. You've already paid for it and you can feel free to just go ahead and configure your account to start using it. So there you can see South Carolina Realtors down there. So you do get this product as part of your member dues, no additional fee required. We're going to begin today by signing into Zipform Plus. You can do this by going to www.zipform.com. I'm actually going to just jump out of this slideshow and into my Zipform Plus account. All right. And I'm just quickly going to sign out and sign back in so that you can see how you would do that. So this is what the front end will look like when you go to zipformplus.com. You'll be prompted to enter in your username and password, which by the way, we do cover that in uh, the first webinar. So if you have any questions about how to set up that account and obtain that password and username, that's going to be in the first webinar in this series. Once you enter in your username and password for Zipform Plus, you can just click sign in. That's going to launch you right inside of your Zipform Plus account. Now in the past couple sessions, we have learned how to create a transaction and how to use templates in order to uh, 
select some of your forms and create some time-saving entries that will allow you to save a little bit of time. So today what we're going to be doing is actually moving again into e-signing. So the first thing you need to do when you're getting contracts out for e-signing is make sure that your Zip Form Plus account is properly configured to do so. Uh, you can actually, oops, sorry about that, make that a little bit bigger. You can do that by going to the upper right hand corner and clicking where me. You can see I've added a photo of myself. You can do that if you would like. Uh, by clicking that me drop down and going all the way to the bottom, we click on profile and settings from this drop down. And we're going to move all the way over once those profile settings pop up to the tab that is named settings. So easy to remember, profile and then settings. Right at the top here, you should see your default e-signature option. Make sure that that you do this the first time you send documents to sign with Ziplogix Digital Inc. Once you've done it, you'll never have to do it again unless it changes. So by coming here, we can select Ziplogix Digital Inc., which you can see I have done. And then below, we're going to select our appropriate default signature time zone. So because I am in Michigan, I have selected Eastern Time, which I believe is what you would be selecting as well. And we're just going to scroll up to the top now and click Save. And as an aside, that default signature time zone is configured so that your timestamps on your documents, once they're signed, are going to accurately reflect the exact time that the signer uh, did execute that signature. And we're going to travel back up to our main transactions home landing page. Hopefully of you are familiar with this. This is where all of your transactions live. And now for all intents and purposes, inside of Zipform Plus, when we talk about transactions, what I'm really referring to is a unique client and property combination housed within a file. So I would create a transaction, for example, uh, purchases if I'm working with a buyer or for my listings if I'm working with a seller. And we talk about transaction creation in that first webinar as well. Today, we're simply going to be manipulating the content inside of a transaction that already exists. So we're going to uh, move ahead in time a little and say that uh, we've signed that agreement with our buyer or seller. We're ready to help them either list their home or uh, purchase a property. So we have created a transaction for that individual uh, or entity, and we have also added our forms in. So this particular one, uh, 138 Madison Avenue, I have created for just this purpose today. We can see that our buyers, Jim Schultz and Jill Schultz, are eagerly awaiting uh, signing those contracts and getting everything executed, making that offer so that they can hopefully purchase their dream home. We're going to click on 138 Madison Avenue in order to open it. And once we open it, you can see that there are a couple different ways that you can access e-signing. From the sign icon on the right-hand side, right after you open the transaction, it's super easy. Or if you want to make sure that all of your documents and forms are included uh, before you send them out for signing, you can move over two tabs to where it says documents. And that's going to show you all of the documents or forms that you've already added to your transaction. Now, if we scroll up to the upper right, we see this all forms icon on the right hand side. Hopefully you all can see that. If I click on that, that is going to show me my South Carolina Association of Shelters Library. So this is going to have all of those fillable forms that your state association has custom view and you can add any of those in. So I've just used a couple as an example uh, and added the to my document section and you just add them by clicking on the appropriate icon there. You may also have a local uh, library or an MLS library, and that is going to be contingent upon where you are located and what memberships you hold. So after we've added all of those forms, and we'll jump ahead a little bit and say that we have filled some stuff out as well, we can see that we've made a couple different entries in here. As we get more and more information and are ready to send this contract for signing, uh, ideally all of these fields will be filled out. So we'll just go ahead and click back. You can see that this information is also going to populate uh, other forms that have related fields in them. So if I open this agreement, 
uh, hopefully, yeah, you can also see that a little bit of information has populated over. So any entry that I make in any of my forms is going to populate all fields that require that same information. So we'll jump ahead in time and just say that we filled all these out. We're ready now to send them for e-signing. So as I mentioned, one way that you can access e-signing is from the summary over on this big launch pad on the right. Another way is from documents to click on e-sign. So if we click on e-sign, it's going to jump us into the actual signing process. Now the e-signature process when it's broken down is actually very, very simple. Um, one thing that you can do is just click on new if you are going to create a new signature packet. Uh, you may create, in fact, you probably will create more than one signature packet in a single transaction. That's highly likely because sometimes we need to send that counter offer if we're working with the seller. Sometimes uh, we need to sign, send additional documents for signing. So it's possible we may create one of these. But for our first signature packet, we're just going to click on new. And this jumps us into the three-step process. Very simple. First step is adding your forms that you want to send for signing. Second step is adding the individuals whom you want to sign those forms. And the third step is making it sure everything looks nice and pretty on the document so that you can send those documents out and your signers know exactly where they need to click to sign. Probably most of you are probably familiar with the concept of e-signing where you go through and you're prompt areas of the document to click in order to agree to the terms. So this is a very similar setup. From the documents to sign window, we can see all of the documents that we added to our transaction. So it may be the case that you don't want to send every single document for signing. So this is where you can kind of cherry pick exactly what documents you want to send. So we're going to do this agreement to buy and sell here. And I'm also going to choose this home inspection report. Now bear with me because I know these particular documents don't exactly go together, but the reason that I'm using this home inspection report is because it is a PDF document. And I wanted to talk in a couple minutes about how PDF documents work inside of e-signing uh, compared to your forms for North Carolina State or your local association library. You can add an external document for signing if you want here just by clicking add external document and browsing for it on your computer's hard drive. I would highly recommend however just adding any outside documents right into the transaction. That makes it easy to track and they're not just tied to one particular e-sign packet. We're going to go down to the bottom and click close. If I real oh, whoops I forgot to check one of the documents to add them I can always go back and select documents to include and select a different document or an additional one from here. So you can see that we are in step one of three. There's this nice little tracker here. It's going to tell you exactly how far along you are in the process of setting up your e-signature packet. So under select forms, we're first going to name our packet. All of the signature packets are given a standard naming convention of signature packet one, as you can see here, or signature packet two, three, four, depending on how many you've created inside of the transaction. I kind of like to just leave the packet name. If you have a specific thing that you would prefer to name your packet, you can feel free to do that. But because the packet is housed inside of a transaction anyway, you're not going to have too difficult of a time figuring out what it's tied to. But if, for example, I wanted to indicate if I were working with a seller that this is a counter offer, you can customize that packet name and add any additional information in that's going to help you easily identify what it is. Below is the signing service. Make sure that this is set to Ziplogic's Digital Inc. If it is set to something different, do make sure to go up to your, oops, sorry about that, uh, go up to your profile settings and configure your default e-signature signing solution for Zip, Ziplogic's Digital Inc. Okay, so we've selected forms. We chose the documents or contracts that we want to send from that select forms window. We also established our packet name, which I'm leaving the same, and our signing service. Once you've done that, you can go all the way up to the upper right where it says next. You see right here in the upper right, and I'm going to click on that. This is now going to launch me into step two. 
And before I start with step two, are there any questions before I go ahead and proceed? I see a couple more people asked for those webinar links. I will be sending those out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move on to step two. Again, if you do have questions, please feel free to ask those at any time. We'll try to get to them periodically throughout the webinar. So we can see that now we move to the second step, we're able to establish who our signing parties are going to be, which in most cases is pretty self-explanatory. Because I am the buyer's agent, I have my buyers who need to sign, uh, need to sign those contracts. You may notice that it automatically defaulted to a view called transaction parties. So zip form forms kind of a cool thing. Your South Carolina forms, if you fill them out with the buyer information or any other pertinent information, that's going to be tied to the transaction. And because it's tied to the transaction, it's also going to hypothetically populate uh, your e-signature packet. And this is just a time-saving feature. So if we look, we see we already have our buyer one information here because we added him in on one of our forms. So all we have to do then is click on the checkbox in order to add our friend Jim in here. This is, oppo uh, this is opposed or different than uh, clicking create new. And as opposed to what we did with transaction parties, we would actually fill in all of the information for Jim, which if we already have it, it makes sense to just add it in because it populated over from our forms. So that's what transaction parties is. If you've added the information uh, into your forms, it's going to auto-populate this area. Let's click on the checkbox also to add our buyer to. And also, myself as a selling agent, I do need to sign somewhere on these documents. So if you are uh, the agent, you may still need to add yourself as a signing party. And I'm going to click Close. If I need to add additional signers, I can do that at any time by just clicking Add Signers. And I jump right back to where I was. All right, so now we have our signing parties added. That was super easy. We have our uh, buyer one, Jim, and our buyer two, Jill. This is a married couple and they are trying to purchase this particular property. You may also notice that I myself as the selling agent added as well. I can change my signing order. Right now what the signing order is showing us is that Jim is going to have to sign the contracts first. He's going to receive them via email first and have to sign them. Once he's that, those contracts are then going to go on to Jill. And once Jill has signed, they're then going to go on to Lori. Uh, this can be a helpful method if you want to keep track of exactly who has the contracts when. But uh, the downfall of it is that if you're trying to do something that is really time sensitive, you may not want one signer to have to wait the other to sign. And in order to mitigate that, you can just click on the drop down and change the signing order. So theoretically, all of my signers can sign at the same time, provided that they receive that email at the same time. So right now, the way we have it ordered, whoever receives their email first is just going to be the one to sign. They can sign at the same time. It really doesn't matter, but then one isn't waiting on the other. You may notice that two of my signers have the same email. A lot of times what will happen is if we're working with a married couple, they may share an email address, and that is perfectly fine because what's going to happen is that Jim here is going to receive an email at Ziplogic, we'll say ziplogicsagent at gmail.com. He's going to receive an email addressed to him while Jill is going to receive an email addressed to her. So same email inbox, but different emails addressed to each of them respectively. The CC option is automatically defaulted on. Uh, for all intents and purposes, all CC means in this case is that the individual who uh, the CC box corresponds with is going to receive a copy of final signed documents. So once everyone's signature is on those forms, on those contracts, it's going to send that signed contract to this individual so that they have a copy of it. If for some reason you don't want a certain individual to uh, receive a copy, you can just unclick their name, just unclick that checkbox that corresponds with them and it won't send that. You also have the CC list option. This is located in the upper right hand corner. CC list is a similar concept to the CC icon that we just looked at. 
except that CC list allows you to carbon copy anyone who is perhaps not a signing party. So this, for example, could be your broker. Uh, it could also be a cooperating agent. It could be a transaction coordinator. So you can add that information in there. You can also access your address book by clicking Add Contacts, and you can locate that contact as well. So if you want to add additional email addresses uh, to the carbon copy list, if you're adding more than one individual, just make sure to separate those unique email addresses with a comma or semicolon. And then once you're done, just click Save. And you'll have those individuals on the CC list. So now once everyone has signed, the uh, email is going to be sent to those individuals containing the completed signed documents. And then finally, we have cybersecurity protection. So I always like to take a moment to talk about the importance of cybersecurity protection and uh, encrypting your documents. Because there is a heavier risk of wire fraud when we're doing everything electronically, it is really important to try and uh, protect the integrity of these contacts and the transactions as possible. And that's why we offer this cybersecurity protection. Cybersecurity protection is an add-on, so it's a $5 uh, fee in order to uh, protect all of the individuals who are in the signing packet. If you don't want to use it, that's fine. You won't be charged. But if you would like, you click on the drop down and enable SMS authentication. It's then going to ask for a valid mobile phone number that can receive text messages. So you would put in probably this individual phone number. And we're going to do that for all of them. Now we can go ahead and click next in order to proceed and we'll be prompted to pay that $5 fee. Again, if we don't want to use cybersecurity protection, we won't be charged for it. What cybersecurity protection does is provides a one-time use code that is sent to these individuals via text message. They'll be prompted to put in that one-time use code before they're able to access the contracts. So you're protecting those contracts because accessing them now requires two things. First, of course, is uh, access to the email address. And then second is that one-time use code. So it really is uh, adding that added layer of security in order to protect those contracts. Uh, and someone just asked a really good question. Actually, a couple of people asked this. Is that $5 per transaction or per individual signer? So it's actually $5 per signature packet. So for this entire signature packet, I can protect one signer. I can protect 20 signers for $5. If I create another signature packet, it will be another $5 fee in order to protect those. But it's uh, for as many individuals as are in that, um, that e-signature packet, it's a $5 fee. And if you want to know more about cybersecurity protection, I'm happy to send some additional information. Just let me know in the question box. But you've probably honestly seen something similar to this if you've ever reset a banking password or your Gmail password. It sends you a code via text message and you're prompted to enter that in before you can recover the information. So just to recap the second step, we've added our signing parties ensured that they have a first name, last name, role, and email associated with them. And we'll see why important in just a moment. We've also established their signing order if we wanted to adjust that and determine who is going to be carbon copied. And also if we want to add any individuals who may not have a signing task, but to be privy to that final document. And then we added cybersecurity protection if we wanted to. Okay, and one of our attendees has asked a question. She has said, if we added, say, an addendum to this transaction, it will cost another $5. 
uh, if you have an addendum and you send it out in an additional signature packet, then yes, that will uh, be an additional $5 fee. So it's $5 per um, signature packet. That's a good question. Thank you for asking. All right, so now we're about to proceed to our final step, which is adding signatures. This is actually a little bit misleading. What it really is is adding signature tasks so that your signers know where to appropriately sign the documents. We're going to click Next. And we're moving on to our final step. All right, and the first thing that we see here is that agreement or that document that we added from our South Carolina library. As we scroll down, we can see that some of these signature tags have already been placed. This is going to be the case with any forms from your form libraries that are provided to you in zip form. It's going to take that first and last name associated with a role, and it's going to determine where on the contract this individual needs to sign. So the fact that these are all pre-tagged for you is actually pretty nice because it can save you some time. We see right here where we have our buyer one. Jim Schultz will be signing our buyer two. Jill Schultz is going to be signing here or in this case, initialing. So of course, without saying uh, probably, but Jim and Jill have not actually signed this document yet. This is merely you setting up exactly where they are going to be signing or initialing. And scroll. And we see that these are actually signature placeholders right here. So this is where Jim and actually be signing and there is a date field associated with both of those. If you would like to associate a date field with an initial you can do that too. I get that question a lot. All you have to do is click on the little gear icon at the top of that initial field and then just click include date field and apply. That's going to include a date field and you can just adjust that. All right, so once we get to the bottom of this contract, that's actually one of our South Carolina forms, we're going to bump into our PDF that we added. And this PDF, uh, ignore the fact that it's a home inspection report, the point is that it is a PDF document. Any document that we pull in from outside of Zipform Plus is going to be read as an external document. And so what this means for e-signing in this context is that you will need to make sure that you appropriately manually tag these documents because they're not all set up for pre-tagging the way that your South Carolina forms are. It's going to be a little bit of a different process. All right, and I see that we have a question that has come in. Uh, Susan, you have asked, how do you know when it is uh, actually them that signed and not you? So you'll actually be sending this to their, um, their email to sign, and this is not signing yet. These really just serve as placeholders that show you where the person will be signing. So we'll go through that signing process in just a moment, and you'll see what that looks like. So in order to manually tag a PDF document, what you want to do is first select the individual or entity who you want to sign the document. So we're going to select Lori here in this case, and I'm going to go to the signing editor on the left and just click, and I'm holding my mouse down and dragging and dropping that signature task. And some of these are adjustable, meaning that I can drag and drop this date field to the appropriate location. You can use the same process to add an initial task, which we saw up top. Uh, you can also add a text box. And if you click on this gear icon, it allows you to make it mandatory, meaning that there's some action required or read only if you want to enter in, say, a value for a counter offer. You can also add the signer name, 
with the text box. And this is also a really good option if you need to do a quick strike through. Just a bunch of dashes in the value and click apply and you can adjust that on top of whatever you want to strike out as well. And it looks a little bit neater on that final document. You can also use a checkbox. You can do a red or an acknowledge and agree. And these are all just stamps that you know that the person has either agreed to uh, the document or acknowledged or done what they need to in order to have the final uh, contract executed. Um, Elaine, you have asked, can the date be made smaller? It can, but I'll tell you a little secret, which is that it looks really big on here so that it's visible, but on that final document, it is going to appear uh, much smaller than this, so it won't be this big block that you're seeing as the placeholder. All right, so now that I have properly tagged my documents, I'm going to click Send. And it's going to bring up a customizable send invitation. I can feel free to adjust this if I want. Maybe I want to put signature packet one, 138 Madison Avenue. And this will indicate to my signers exactly uh, what property this is for. You can adjust anything in the email message too if you want to. If not, you don't have to, it's up to you. And then click send. And congratulations, this e-signature packet was successfully started. It's going to launch you right into your window where you're able to view details and uh, pause the signature packet. We'll come back here in just a second. I do see that we had a question come in. Uh, someone has asked, without the security option, is the document then clear text? Um, would you be able to uh, just kind of explain exactly what you mean by clear text to the person who asked that? I'll be able to answer it a little bit better then. So we're actually going to exit out of here. We're going to return to this window in a couple minutes, but I'm going to close this. And you can now see my e-signature packet we've created that is now in progress. And were I to go create a new signature packet, I would just click new and repeat that same process if you needed to add an addendum. I'm actually going to leave Zip Form Plus now and just show you how that e-signature packet will look once it translates to email and what your signers are going to be seeing on their side. So I'm going to jump into my email quickly. One of my signers gets an email that says Ziplogix Digital Inc. Your documents are ready to review. So that will be sent from you. They click on that. And this is Jill. So Jill has been sent an email that says her documents are ready to sign. This is the part where if you add a cybersecurity protection, Jill will be prompted to take the text message that will be sent to her phone and enter in that one-time use code. She's then able to sign those documents. So if anyone ever gets access to your signer's emails, they're not going to have access to those contracts unless they also have their phone, which is highly unlikely. Jill clicks Sign Documents and she's launched into the e-signing process. So it'll have her read this quick legal consent. It's not a lengthy document. It's just basically saying that she consents to put her signature electronically on forms. So hopefully she'll be accepting and agreeing to that legal consent. And she clicks next. That will launch her into the area where she can create her signature. If she wants to use the default, that's fine. Or she can click choose a custom signature and she can choose a font. One of six signature fonts. Or she can draw her own signature with her mouse. And as you can see, I am not too swell at this, but I want to give you an idea of how that looks. Okay. And also initials. But since I'm pretty sloppy at that, I'm just going to click use default signature initial. That's the easy way to go. And then we're going to go to the bottom right and click let's go. And Jill is now being launched into those documents that you were just nice enough to set up for her. She has two options. She can either click let me review and scroll through the document page by page, or she can click go and it's going to jump her right to her first signing task. 
Now she can still scroll up and review that contract, make sure she knows what she's signing, and then go down and click initial. So where you were seeing that big JS on your side, Jill is simply seeing a tag that prompts her to click in order to initial. You can see it's now right here. It'll be clearer on that final document. So she clicks again, click, click. It's really simple. She scroll back and read the document. Again, make sure she agrees to what she's signing and just click. And then here, instead of an initial task, happens to be a sign task. That sign date and the exact time that she signed is also going to pop in on the right here. That is why we established our default signature time zone. And click. And one more. And then my progress bar in the upper left-hand corner shows our signers how far along in the, pro uh, the process they are. Jill can choose to stay here and continue to review her documents. Or when she's all done, she can click finish. And not only will it send Jill a follow-up email uh, once everyone's done signing containing those signed documents, but it will also send an email to you notifying you that uh, one of your signers has signed the documents. She's going to click close here. So that is the process that your signers would use in order to navigate the e-signature pro uh, process and actually go through those con contracts and get them signed, pardon. Uh, that is also the same process that you would use as the agent if you have signature tasks that are necessary on the forms as well. Um, and Elaine, you have asked, you have a combination initial and date field, so it is not required to add from the gear wheel every time. Uh, so there was a reason, and I'm not exactly, I can't put my finger on why, but there was a reason that we chose to have that uh, add in, or add date field inside of the initial box. Some issue with that with certain associations. So we have uh, actually added that to the gear icon now. So short answer is unfortunately at this time, uh, you will have to enable those date fields for initials if that is what uh, is if that's what you need to correspond with your initial tasks. Um, and James, uh, thank you for clarifying. So James was the one who asked, without this option, is the document then clear text? And what is meant by clear text is that the document is not encrypted. Now, the document is still going to be an encrypted document. This just prevents against wire fraud. So um, it provides another layer of front end protection so that if someone gains access to your signer's email or hacks it, they still won't be able to access the contracts. But those contracts are still encrypted documents. They're still digitally secure, meaning that if anyone tries to tamper signatures it's going to effectively render them invalid so the document will be null and void if anyone tries to mess with it which is kind of a nice uh, characteristic of digital signing all right so the last thing we're going to do today before we wrap up is click on the transaction again and I'll show you you can go back at any time and monitor the status of your signing packet you can either do this by clicking sign or again from clicking e-sign under documents and that's going to launch you into that same area where you can create a new signature packet for the moment though our, fo our focal point pardon is going to be the signature packet that already exists we can click on in order to gain more information about how far along in the process we are We can see that our buyer two has already signed. We are still pending signatures from our buyer one and our selling agent. If you want to adjust any information for them, you can click on the edit signer icon. That's this little pen right here. You can adjust the follow-up email if necessary and also the spelling of the names. You can add additional signers if you want to from here. You can also view the details and history of your signing packet. You can click edit. Clicking edit is going to suspend the packet. So if you need to go back and make any significant, more significant changes, it's going to let your signers know that the packet has been suspended and that they'll be notified when it's resumed. When you're ready to resume it, just click resume. 
and it will send another email saying that your signers have the AOK -okay to sign again. So I'll show you just one more time how I got there. I clicked on the signature packet. In order to suspend, I clicked edit. I can also click view details and history that same edit page. I see that I did have a question come in. Uh, Deborah, you have asked, how do you make a correction uh, to make a counter off? There are a couple of ways that you can do that. Uh, chief among them is using that text box. So if you want to strike something out, you can put dashes in the value of that text box. If you want to make an adjustment to price, you can just put a new price in the value of that text box and then you can adjust it. That would be the easiest way, in my opinion, easiest workaround to make a correction to a counter offer. Deborah, you have said um, a different Deborah. Uh, oftentimes, I want to email the form to myself so I can complete text fields on forms without me signing. Is there a way I can do this without having to put a signature or initial field on the form? So in order to complete the text fields, you would actually be able to fill out the contract before you even send it for signing. So um, if you're just looking to fill in areas of the form, you would want to do that before you send it through the signing process. But for the most part, all of your South Carolina forms are going to be fillable. I hope that kind of answers that question. Um, if it doesn't, please let me know and I can provide some more clarity. From this final page, this is where you are able to adjust uh, all of your preferences for your e-signature packet. If you want to modify, you can click modify. It's the same thing as edit. It's just going to suspend that signature packet. And we'll let all your signers know that you've done so and you can make the necessary corrections. You can also view the history of the signing packet. This is a lot like an audit trail by clicking view history. It's going to show you all of the events that occurred from the most recent at the top to the oldest at the bottom. You can also view whoever was on the CC list by clicking on view CC list. So nothing too fancy there. Sorry about that, keep getting uh, e-signature notifications in there. Um, you can also Follow, send a follow-up email to any of your signers. If they say, hey, I never received those documents that you said you sent, you can just click email. This is a fast workaround to resend the documents. Select whichever individual you want to receive those documents. Say, we'll say second round of contracts. Hi, oops. Jim, I am sending you the same contracts as you said you didn't receive them. And then always make sure to click include a pickup link with message. That is going to include that signed documents link so that they'll be able to access the documents again. Then we just go ahead and click send. So a quick way to add a follow-up email. You can also view any of the documents or download them. Just click on view or download, which correspond with the document name you want to. So I clicked view there, and if we move down, we can actually see that the signatures are showing up in real time. So because Jill has signed, we're already able to see hers. Someone was asking a little bit earlier about how the date field would look or if you could size it. And I'm about to show you what that would look like. So the date field is going to look something like this. Um, I have a very small screen resolution now, so it's appearing kind of tiny. It will depend on how much you've zoomed in on your document. But this is going to be that final verified date field and timestamp. And you can see it also has that uh, secure stamp, that shield, which lets you know that it is valid. We'll close out of here. And one last cool trick you can access on this page is download all. This downloads all of your documents that you've sent for signing. We'll click OK there, along with a uh, an complete audit trail in a compressed zipped file. 
So you know, I, you, I can see all of my documents here and then I'll also click signature packet one. And this presents me with an expanded audit trail. So we saw that condensed audit trail a little bit earlier. This has all of the details on it as well. And then for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through every single uh, person signing because I think you kind of get the idea of that. But I do want to mention that once everyone has finished signing, you'll receive a, kind of a folder that will appear in your documents area. And that contain all of those completed signed documents. So you're receiving them at your email, but also right back in your transaction. They're deposited right back in automatically. Okay, and uh, Deborah, thank you for clarifying. So Deborah has asked, for example, to complete home warranty forms or any other forms that are not in zip form, so PDF documents. So Deborah's question again was, oftentimes I want to email the form to myself so I can complete text fields on forms without me signing. Is there a way I can do this without having to put a signature or initial field on the form? Uh, so there are a couple different answers to this question and it's a really good question. Um, so if you want to fill out those forms before you send them for e-signing and they are not formed, they're forms from outside of uh, ZipForm, you would have to do that inside of a PDF editor or Microsoft Word. I would highly recommend not uh, altering anything on forms after signatures have been put on there just because it's possible that that will compromise the integrity of the document. So currently, uh, no, there's not a way for you to do it inside of ZipForm uh, without having to put a signature or initial field. Uh, because it is an outside document and not a ZipForm document, you won't actually be able to edit it in the system. Jay, you have asked, how do some companies get their logo at the top of contra uh, contracts? Uh, if you're referring to brokerages, that is a custom fee. So if you are interested in that, uh, they can work with you in order to customize forms. Uh, they do pay a little bit extra so that they can have their logo for those uh, companies or individuals that have that. If you're interested, just let me know and I can connect you with someone from our sales team who can possibly give you a quote on that. All right, big thanks everyone. Lots of really good questions today. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, right now would be the time. So if there's anything else that maybe I didn't answer or you want additional information on, please feel free to let me know right now. And Jay, yes, I will send you that information. And for anyone else who is interested in getting your contracts or your logos customized, please let me know. And I will be happy to connect you with someone in our sales department. All right, if there are any other questions, feel free to ask those now. Uh, if you think of more questions later that maybe you didn't get a chance to ask or just think of at a later time, you can always feel free to email us. Our email is training at ziplogics.com and I'll put that product support slide up while I try to answer a couple more questions. All right, and a couple of people have asked for links and also for the information on customizing forms. I will be uh, very happy to send those to you. Uh, Jay, you have asked, could you also hit on a few of things, a few things at the top of the screen like the lightning bolt? Yeah, so I can spend a couple moments going over uh, list flash for anyone who wants to uh, stick around. I'd be happy to go over a couple additional features before we wrap up today, just because we are ending a little bit early. Uh, and for everyone else, I do thank you so much for attending. If you have any technical issues with your account, our customer care line is 586-840-0140. And they are available around the clock 24-7 in order to assist you now. And if you have any questions, uh, again, please feel free to send training at ziplogics.com. For everyone who asked for a response to something, I will try to connect back with you at some point today. And um, a couple people have asked if I uh, if they need to enter their email address to receive the link. No, absolutely not. I do have your email addresses, so no need to do that. But I do appreciate that for those of you who have. I will be sending uh, those links out, and so you can receive not only the link to today's webinar, but also the links to uh, the two past ones if you're interested. 
If you're on social media, feel free to connect with us. You can like us on Facebook, connect with us on LinkedIn, follow us on Twitter, or tag us on Instagram. So we'd love to connect with you uh, if you are on social media. Again, I do thank everyone so much for attending today's webinar. I am going to end the recording now. Uh, if anyone wants to stick around for a couple moments, I can go over a couple more facets of Zipform Plus that are not related to digital signing. So I thank everyone so much for your time. Have a uh, wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.